Poundland has introduced their latest power bank and I have to say I'm not a fan unless of course you want to actually recycle stuff and scavenge components. It costs £2, which is interesting because I'll show you it. it. It's got a very interesting feature that makes it very reminiscent to the power hit and completely unlike these ones. So you open it up and you've got the power pod. Now it's interesting to note that despite the fact that it's this, you know, it's much bigger than the power hit. The power hit actually has the same capacity. It's quite odd. But you've got a little switch in here that you can turn off and on. And the sad thing is that this is a power bank that will only charge your phone. Well, it won't even charge your phone at all. Well, it will charge it a wee bit. You plug it into your phone and it's got a 500 milliamp hour capacity. It claims 600 milliamp hour inside, 650 milliamp hour. In reality, I've tested the cell inside. I got another one of these. I took it apart. I've been doing some tests. And uh, this thing has a 500 milliamp hour cell, which after conversion efficiencies will be probably three or 400 milliamp hour uh, into a, a battery. And if you consider the typical mobile phone battery is 3,000 milliamp hour these days, this will just barely put a sniff of a charge in and then once it's put the charge in, you can't recharge it and you just drop it in the bin. Really? And that's very reminiscent of the power hit, which worked on the same thing. But there is a redeeming feature. The power hit came with this fat little lithium battery inside. It is actually a rechargeable lithium battery in these. It's just that they are using that because it's the cheapest way to implement it. It's kind of wasteful. This one says 600 milliamp hour. I tested it. It came up at about 350, uh, 530 milliamp hour, which is respectable. It doesn't have protection because it doesn't need the overcharge protection because you're not going to charge it. Uh, so this is a uh, 52. Which ones is this? This is the. Oh, this is the. 702535, it's a fairly standard cell. Note that although this same size of cell is used in some drones, this is not suitable for the really high current loads, but it's still a worthy cell. If you ever see one of these lying in the street, thrown in the bin or whatever, pick it up because you can scavenge this cell out and you can recharge it. Let's open this one. That's what we're here for. I, I've just misplaced my spudger. I should have actually thought that before I started. Here's the spudger. So, uh, they do two versions of this, one for Apple and one for Android with the different connector on them. So let's uh, get this open to reveal the battery inside it. Now the battery, oh, prizing this up. The battery is a 523450. And the interesting thing about this is it's got no protection. It's a hermetically sealed metal case. And it's got a... Let me open this. Let me show you. I'll just peel all the tape off it. Try not to short out the connections of the process since this should be fully charged. Let's actually check the voltage. So I'm going to peel the tape off this. Ugh. Maybe I'm going to peel the tape off it. Oop. No, I'm not much luck here. The tape is very well. It's that transformer tape. It just peels off in bits. You may just have to believe me about this then. I'll have another go. No, no, it's just, it's not, it's not peeling off. It's just shredding into little pieces. Oh, that's, that's all right. So what we've got here is we've got the metal case for the battery and there's no protection circuit on it. It isn't designed to protect against overcharge, over discharge. They don't give a shit because, you know, it's only going to get used once apparently. And it's interesting because if you peel this cardboard off, it's got the positive tab is directly fixed. It's directly spot welded onto the case, the metal case. And the negative tab has this little dimple that comes through a case with a little tiny moat around it. And then it's got the spot welded terminal onto the top of that. Um, it's very close around the case. It's just the way it's designed. It's, uh, it's odd. Uh, but this battery is actually very familiar because when you compare it next to a Nokia BL5C battery, it's the same thing. But in this case, it's got the protective circuit just spot welded onto or soldered onto the tabs that are on this. So this is actually a Nokia battery that's been repurposed. And although it says 650 milliamp power, I tested, I tested one with a little connector on it 
and I repeatedly charged, discharge, charge, discharge, and it came up to typically the value is about 500 milliamp hour. And if you look at it, look at the size difference. It's the fact it's a thinner battery in a metal case compared to this one. It's, it makes it kind of rugged, but uh, it's you know the winner here is actually the power hit in terms of the compactness of the cell, even if it doesn't have that ruggedization. The circuit board is especially interesting now. Before I bring in other exhibits here, I'm just going to point out that if you're thinking of buying one of these and you're going to a festival like it says, on the packaging it says, great for festivals. Well, that's assuming that you can get through the festival by putting 10% charge into your smartphone. Keep in mind that these, well, this one costs a pound which is half the price of the power pod, and you can recharge it. Its capacity is, in this case, it's a really generous capacity, almost double the power pod. In this case, for £2, the same cost as a power pod, you get almost, well, you get over three times capacity. And with both of these, you can recharge them. Okay, they're not quite as pocket friendly as that one, but you can recharge these and use them over again. You can actually just steal power from where you can get it and charge your batteries and then put it into your phone later on. So these are the better option. I shall put these exhibits out the way. Lots of exhibits here. I shall bring in more exhibits. So I'm going to shove these out the way, making sure that I don't short anything out because they are all active. Oh, I was going to check the voltage. So voltage out the box, unused. I'm going to guess it's going to hopefully be around about four volts. Terminal there, terminal there. It's going to be, it's just over four volts, which is fine. It's charged up to pretty much a, a good percentage of its capacity. Probably not up to 100%. Because after it, set, go, it gets to 4.2 volts, it tends to settle back down a bit. What's really interesting here is this chip. Let me bring in another exhibit. So let's take a look at the circuit board because I've already kind of reverse engineered it. And it turns out, and this is just the really ridiculous bit, it turns out it's based on an SY350-3501C, which is a full power bank chip. This chip is actually capable of charging this cell, except they've omitted that bit of the circuitry of it. So let me uh, bring in next bit of the exhibit, next bit of the puzzle here, which is quite a hard chip to find this. It's a, uh, here is the schematic for the uh, SY3501. And it's designed to drive two LEDs. In this case, it's only got one LED. That's the LED there. It's coming, I flipped this over. This is why the text is the wrong way around. So here's the uh, SY3501, and it's got these two pins down here. One at the bottom here is going to LED1. It's going along this track. It's then disappearing through the circuit board, coming up on the other side. There's the LED with respect to ground. It's the ground connection. This thing is a large ground neck, ground plane on both sides. It's quite nicely designed PCB. Um, the other LED, they've passed the same ground plane underneath it here. So they've put a screen print in that as extra insulation. And the pin just sits, it floats above the circuit board, so it's not connected. If you connect an LED between that and that, if you were using it in a charging mode, that would actually like to show you the thing was charging and when it was charged. Uh, other things, if you look at the circuit design, here's the positive coming on here, and the first thing it does is goes to that switch the little switch that you uh, can control from this edge switch, that's just to make sure it doesn't trickle discharge. Uh, as many power banks, these chips, they do draw a small passive current. So because of this one-time rechargeable, to give it a long storage life, they've got an on-off switch. It's got the standard circuitry. It goes through the switch, and then it goes to here, where it goes to capacitor, and then it goes to the battery pin. It goes to this pin on the chip. There is that capacitor, the 10 microfarad capacitor uh, across the battery, which is this capacitor here. Then it's got that little snubber, the 0.5 ohm and the 33 nanofarad. It's got these capacitors here. And on the output, it's got that 10 microfarad capacitor here across the set of output pins that then loop up to this output uh, connector. The only thing that's stopping it from charging is this one ohm resistor missing and this one megafarad capacitor. 
in reality, I decided to uh, patch a little bit of extra circuitry on. Let me find the next exhibit here. So I connected a 18650 cell to one of these and I patched on a couple of leads, a, a USB charge lead. I connected the charge lead to positive goes to the pin four of this. So I connected the positive to this pin, positive, and because this is all common to negative, I connected the negative to this and I gave it a charge. I wondered if maybe these are off standard chips. Maybe they're off, you know, the reason they're using this chip is maybe it's a reject chip because it's not quite compliant. I plugged it in, left it to charge for a length of time. It cut off exactly at 4.2 volts. I didn't include the one ohm resistor and one microfarad capacitor. I don't have any. I could have used an electrolytic right enough. But I just, uh, to test this, I just hooked straight across with a USB lead. So it can charge. And ironically, if, you know, even in the same package with a slightly different circuit board, some of these uh, power bank chips have the USB in and USB out actually parallel together. If they'd used one of those chips, theoretically, you might have been able to charge this from the on the go uh, type power from the, your mobile from your mobile phone so after your mobile phone being charged you could have put some power back into this and then taken this with you after topping your mobile phone up uh, if you do want to go to a festival for several days and you want to actually charge your phone i'm afraid you're going to have to buy the somewhat chunk here uh, this is a black web I trust that it probably will be 20,000 milliamp power 20 amp power it weighs a ton it's it's rated uh, 20,100 milliamp hour apparently I shall put that to the test later on hmm but this is a uh, the black web it's the brand used by Walmart and Asda and that will happily charge your phone properly but that said if you want to scavenge the batteries out of these I did test these cells I used this uh, power bank circuit that's why they've got these connector on them and I repeatedly charged and discharged and this one did come in at 500 milliamp hour and this one came at just over uh, 500 milliamp power so if you're looking for a cheap lithium cell you could go and get yourself a power hit from Tesco used to sell them I don't know if they still sell them co-op I believe still sell them you can get them from various places or for a little bit less, but a larger cell with a metal case, you can go to Poundland and buy one of these power pods, use it to put a tiny quantity of charge into your phone, and then either hack it to make it chargeable again, or uh, you could just scavenge the cell out of it, keeping in mind that it doesn't have the circuit protection, it doesn't have that over voltage uh, and un over discharge protection. But um, yeah, so I'm not sure what to make of that. It seems quite expensive for a one-use wasteful thing it makes me wonder if they're just trying to use up old cells or out of spec cells but it just seems you know these cells are perfectly capable of taking a charge and are useful for small applications it's very strange so i, I can't say i'm going to give any poundland any awards for for this particular thing uh, other than the fact that they're making available for two pounds a metal clad lithium cell and a little uh, boost circuit um, yeah it's interesting but yeah uh, mixed thoughts about this if you ever see them lying about if they've been discarded at festivals and you want to scavenge the components pick them up that's the best way to recycle them is to pick them up, open them up and uh, and reuse them. But keep in mind that uh, you will need to provide proper protection for the batteries if you're charging them. And also just, uh, well, as always with lithium batteries, don't take risks, uh, put them in a metal tray while they're being charged as a precaution. Um, but they might find their way into a project as a, as a really cheap, handy, off-the-shelf lithium cell.